Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another VetWiz video. Now today is pretty exciting. I've managed to get my hands on a MacBook Air M1, one of the new uh, processors with the Apple Silicon. And I've got VectorX and Twinmotion installed. Uh, okay, so today we're gonna just focus a bit on VectorX. But really you can see, uh, I'm just doing a little bit of kind of casual testing of a few projects I've been working on. And I thought it'd be fun for you to uh, see how the new M1 processor handles VectorX. Now, so far my experiences are feeling really, really good, but this is literally the first project I've opened up. So all of this is live. Okay, so my first experience is just sort of the zooming in, zooming out. Now you can see on the two different zoom modes Vectorx has, the interactive mode, um, it's pretty smooth actually. And I will tell you at the moment, this is two things I've got turned on, are heliodons for the shadows, and I've also got, let's do one without the shadows, yeah, it's pretty nice. And I've also got the ambient occlusion on. So if I go up into my lighting settings, uh, the ambient occlusion looks great, as you can see, it does add a nice effect for the rendering. But it does definitely slow things down, so you should see it's pretty smooth. Yeah, it's really nice. So those two things definitely slowed the model down a little bit. Um, but from my experience so far, you know, I'm able to work with both of those on. Okay, that's great. So the next thing is let's just look at changing standard views. So here I am in top plan. I'm going to tap my space bar so you can see what I'm doing. Use the new on-demand tools. And we're just going to swing through the views. And as you can see, pretty much Vectorworks is rendering these views, you know, instantly. So there's absolutely no delay in terms of going from uh, top plan view to sort of three dimensional views. So very, very cost, very effective and very quick. What I might actually do is just select something on the model just to center it for you. And then let's just try that again. So pop the display open, let's get underneath. Yeah, brilliant, really, really fast. Okay, so no problem there at all with changing views. Um, another little test I would like to do, just turning on layers on and off, something that I do all the time when I'm working. And again, you know, it's really instant, really responsive. Um, in fact, you know, I dare to say it feels a bit quicker than my MacBook Pro that I'm currently using. So this is all pretty exciting stuff. Okay, so um, let's have a look at another kind of test I want to do here, which is cutting some sections through the model. Now I really love this in Vectorworks. Let's get around to this section here. I'm going to use the clip cube. Um, if you don't see the clip cube, then just remember to go up to your settings and turn on the options down here. I'm going to go to this clip cube and turn that on. And basically I'm just going to kind of slide through the model and that's really nice. It's going really, really smoothly. There's no sign of delay. So it's pretty slick. Let's do another one here. And you can see it's a nice little project where Cutting through, let's get through these stairs here. Okay, let's spin that around. And I wonder if I can turn the shadows on. Let's see how it looks with some shadows on. Oh, you don't really see those in the clip cube, of course. So that looks really nice, actually. Um, quite responsive. Let's do another little spin around. Absolutely really, really zippy. If I hold the B key down, I get into my X-ray field mode. That's good. That's really instant, really smooth as well. I should mention, actually, um, I've got the MacBook Air closed, and I'm actually running this currently on my BenQ 4K screen, um, but I'm running it in a, a slightly, not a 4K resolution, otherwise all the icons look a bit small, but everything looks super crisp and very, very nice quality. Okay, so what we're going to do now then, let's have a look at actually cutting a section. So we'll right click, we'll go to create section viewport and I'm interested to see how long this might take. So I'm going to go through, let's make a new sheet, uh, let's do this test section. Okay, so this is a good little test of processing power. If I leave it on hidden line, basically um, hidden line processing in Vector it's 2022 has now become, wow, multi-processor, that was fast. Um, I have to say that was really, really quick, that surprised me. Um, and what we can do here, let's do another page, side by side. So this is a really nice feature of Vectorx. Anyway, if you don't know this one, you've got the section here. You can see it's all sort of blocked out in, you know, kind of planning form. What I'll do is I'll just duplicate the section across a bit and go into my uh, settings, advanced properties. Let's just scroll down, advanced properties here. I'm just going to turn on the uh, detail that's already in the model. 
Now all the dialogues feel really good, they look great in Big Sur, I have to say. And this is the sort of true test because there's a lot more detail. Um, so what we'll do, scroll up, get ready, click update, and let's wait a few seconds. That is quick. That is really, really quick. So this is very encouraging so far. And we'll do one more little test, which is to put this into shaded mode. Uh, we've no longer got the OpenGL. Shaded, well, is there, but it's just been renamed. And I'm also gonna go perspective. Finally, I'm just gonna go into my layers and I'm gonna go and turn the heliodons on as well. Okay, and let's also do one more thing. Let's go to lighting options and turn that ambient occlusion back on. Okay, so let's go for it. So let's go for our update, get ready. We'll click update and let's see how long this takes to render. So really, um, there's two things that have happened here. Vector's 2022 is now made a hidden line multi-processing. So it's a lot, lot faster. Um, so that's a lot quicker to do. Also, you will notice that um, when you're doing normal renders in hidden line, you can actually carry on working. Now that was pretty good. That's nice and quick. Um, the resolution wasn't that high and that was simply a fact that I didn't bother setting the resolution up. So I might just pop down, do a true test. Let's pop that down to 300. Okay, so when I re-render now, it will take a bit longer, of course. Um, but the resolution should be much, much crisper. If you look at these areas here where you've got the pixelation, uh, just let it re-render. That's really, really nice. So yeah, very, very fast. Um, seems really zippy, actually. So this is exciting. Um, I think for Mac users, we've been waiting for some nice new processes. This is really, really good. Personally, I'm waiting for the next generation, the MacBook Air 16-inch M1X or whatever they appear to be called, mainly because I need more ports and displays. Um, but so far, this is extremely nice. So I'm just going to go through to um, a few of my other sheets on the drawing and see how these sort of performance feels on these. And this is nice. I'm able to flick through my sheets quite rapidly on this project. You can see we've got a quite a bit of detail uh, in the project here. Let's go to these elevations. And we'll just do a quick little test on those. I'll tell you what, let's just select them and let's make them a wireframe for a second. So just update them. So they're just not rendered. Okay, so this is something we do, you know, lots and lots of times in the course of the project. Change, make changes, and then we need to update. So let's see how long this takes for four viewports. Click update. So these are, I think, 300 dots per inch, these viewports. It's using OpenGL. And we shall see how fast it is. So it seems pretty zippy so far. Um, you know, normally you've got to wait a few seconds um, and every bit of time waiting, you know, is a bit of time wasted in my view. So this is extremely nice, quite a bit of detail. You can see we've got some people and stuff in there as well. So very, very impressive so far. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing a bit more uh, testing, but my initial impressions are excellent. Um, you can see these are the kind of drawings that I love to produce in Vectorit. So, you know, because I'm working in 3D all the time, um, I need something that will kind of give me that sort of processing power. And uh, yeah, the new, let's just have a quick look about this Mac. It's just Big Sur, it's an M1. Um, so it's not by means the fastest that they're going to produce. It's only got eight gig of memory, but that seems fine as is at this stage as well. Excellent. We're going to open a vector file, so 2022 file format has already been converted. Um, I really just wanted to show you how fast uh, the M1 is at launching. Um, as you know with vector, it can take a little while to load up sometimes. Um, so yeah, it seems pretty quick. Obviously a combination of processing and hard disk. But that is quite zippy um, to go from nothing to open and fully rendered in just a second or two. So this is nice. Let's just have a little spin around our project again. Okay, so the opening and all the other tests seem pretty, pretty good. Um, so I just want to do a final little test, which is go to my perspective here. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this, and we're just gonna drop down and do three things, or four things rather. Let's just make the viewport a bit smaller, one to 100. Okay, I wanna do a little test here. Well, let's just delete this where I've got four different layers. So let's have this one, this one. So this is gonna be open GL or shaded as we are now discussing. Um, we're gonna put this one into um, final quality. And then we're just gonna drop this one down 
here and we're going to go for the new redshift rendering. I'm intrigued to see how this works. I mean, bearing in mind it's probably not really set up for redshift. There we go, redshift exterior final. Let's do that. Uh, let's go for fast, actually. Okay, so we know, let's click update on the OpenGL. It's going to be pretty quick. Um, you can see the geometry processing and it's pretty much done in a flash of an eye. Now the render works will be a bit slower because it's final quality and you know all the lighting and the shadows and everything will look great and the reflections but definitely takes a bit longer to render. Um, so first thing I'll notice is my little activity monitor here is maxing out. Um, okay, that's very interesting. We have 17 gigabytes. So the memory pressure, we've only got eight gig on board. Uh, so the memory management seems pretty good on the new operating system. That's very impressive. If we did have 16 gig, that would give it a lot more breathing space. Um, but let's have a look. It's rendering away here. So that looks pretty good. Now, while it's rendering, I'll just draw a few new features. You can see at the moment, I've got all my, my little um, snap points showing, which I never like on Vectorworks. So personally, I like to pop into those and just turn those off. See, our renders have finished. Let's just zoom in and look at these. So here's the new shaded mode. Um, let's pan across to, this is the final quality, which looks nice, but it did take 16 minutes or a bit more. Um, pretty slow. It's also got this quite sort of bluey tint to it, and that's from the, uh, the sort of sky, if you like. But I'm really impressed with the redshift. Not only is it very fast, good compromise, the quality, the reflections, and you know, really, really nice rendering without the blue tint as well. So very impressive, that's the new Redshift rendering. Um, even though officially this Mac hasn't got the graphics capabilities uh, that is recommended, it still seems like, well, a huge <laughs> speed boost in terms of time saved. Just doing a rough calculation, that's uh, a lot faster. Okay. Well, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video of me doing a little bit of testing just on this lovely MacBook Air. The one other thing I will tell you is it's totally silent. There's no fans in it. So it literally makes zero noise. And that is actually very nice because normally I've got my big uh, eGPU spinning away and you know, it's actually quite noisy in the scheme of things. Um, so yeah, really beautiful machine. I'm really impressed with it. So personally, I'm just hanging on a little bit longer for the new app MacBook M1Xs or possibly uh, the iMacs. But you know, these look like great machines um, and they don't cost a lot. Very, very zippy, uh, really good performance. And you know, this is just on the, the CAD side. On everything else, they're super quick. So thanks ever so much for watching everybody. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I will be doing some testing soon on Twin Motion. And I think I'll carry on with this very same project so you can see how this works in Twin Motion on my next video. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.